think that's where a lot of people go go bad with a pup. They throw them in a pen and just throw feed to them every day. And to me, you got to make a connection with them. Some guys don't agree with me on that, but I think you got to have a good bond with a dog. It's real simple, I think, with a pup, and a lot of people don't understand it. When a pup is ready to start, it will start. You can't force a pup to start, and you can't force a pup to treat. It has to do it on its own. Hello and welcome to the Stark Outdoors podcast. I'm your host Clayton Stark and today's episode is actually going to be a podcast I recorded last night when I got together with the Stalliard family. This podcast features Jeff, Casey, and Cody Stalliard and I'm assuming all of you out there know of these people. If you've been around competition coon hunting or known what that is, they're pretty well known. They've been very successful for many years. They've won basically all there is to win. So I got together with them and got to their place around five o'clock and we sat down and recorded a podcast it went really well and then probably around 6 30 we decided to go out and hit the woods and i filmed another episode of my houndsman spotlight series and if you're new to my content that's a video series where i travel around and get together with some of the most well-known people that hunt with dogs whether that be coon hunting or squirrel hunting and just kind of share their story and do some pleasure hunting and when i got together with the stallion we took out osage orange set him up joe and a hillbilly deluxe pup named bill and these conditions are probably the worst time of year that i've actually went and did one of these hunts with other people I have hunted my own dogs just around the house when the conditions were worse, like back when it was snowy and icy, but as far as traveling and getting together with someone, this was definitely the worst conditions. It was super, super muddy, and the time of year, there's nothing really moving. They have no reason to move. They're not breeding yet, and we were hunting in the, the densest fog we've had. It was so thick, you couldn't see 10 foot in front of you, but their dogs covered some ground, and we ended up getting treed and looked at six coon that night, so there's a reason why they've been so successful over the years. They've always got dogs that'll find coon to tree, and if you're new to my podcast or new to my content, make sure you go to my Facebook page, Clayton Stark, Stark Outdoors. That's where I post a lot of my stuff. I'm also on Instagram, Stark underscore outdoors, and also TikTok, Stark underscore outdoors. And also, if you want to make video requests or podcast requests or see this stuff and listen to these podcasts and watch these videos before everyone else, I actually post behind the scenes stuff and live updates as I make these videos. And I also post these videos about a week in advance. And if you want to see that, go to patreon.com slash Stark Outdoors. And for just $3 a month, you can have access to all of that. And for those of you who have already been longtime subscribers on there i really appreciate you you help make this possible and i'd also like to thank all my sponsors without you guys this also wouldn't be possible so i just want to give a big thank you to the following companies dogtra coon dog wear conkey's hound hunting supply bayou legacy game calls with a tree shaker coon squalor big dog lights coon hunter supply and razor hunting gear gun dog house doors ring tails and tall tails hunting supply and taxidermy saddle up cryo john steber with lonesome blue kennel so if you want some quality blue tech hounds reach out to john steber in the lonesome line bill shiniger with saddle up lazarus a grand knight champion plot hound which you can see go hunting on my youtube channel akc world champion gray knight champion pkc platinum champion davis's rosedale frogger if you want to see him in action or his pups in action make sure you check him out on my youtube channel as well ukc gray knight champion pkc gold champion backwater bobo and i really appreciate all your guys support and if you have a stud dog out there and you want to make a stud dog video just reach out to me because i also make stud dog videos over this last year i've built quite a decent sized platform for the dog hunting community to use to advertise their dogs businesses and products through all my social media platforms and pages my content reaches a couple million people a month and I've had lots of positive feedback from the people I've worked with so if you're interested in advertising your business on here or your stud dog just reach out to me and we can get something set up and if you're new here I hope you stick around and enjoy this this hunt was a really great time and it was nice sitting down and getting to know these people I've heard about them over the years and obviously if you're around coon hunting you kind of know these people they're pretty popular people that have won and accomplished a lot with coon hunting and I'm really glad I got this opportunity to go hunt with them and I hope you enjoy this podcast uh Casey Stallard yeah, Jeff Stallard. How are you guys doing? Good, how are you? Pretty good. I want to start with Jeff first. When did you start coon hunting? Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea. It's been a long time. I guess I probably started with a Larry Dana. Actually, I don't know how long it's been. It's been a while. Five, six years? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's been a while. Larry had an old dog called Rowdy, a pretty good old dog. And uh, I used to go over there and hunt him, and he quit and go to bed. What? We don't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> was, was it a walker? Yeah. 
yeah, okay. it was. I used to go with him, go hunting with him, and he'd drive me around, drop me off, let me take his truck, and when I'd get done hunting early in the morning, I'd just go in there and go sleep on his couch. So is that what you hunted the whole time, is walkers? Pretty much, yeah. What's your favorite quality of, about him? Uh, probably hunting real hard and being by yourself and having coons. Yeah. <laughs> when did you start? Oh, I don't. I mean, ever since I can remember, probably Dad probably started taking me. I was six, seven years old, you know, and I was wanting to go before that, but a little too young. I mean, seeing him, my dad hunt, Cody, you know, I've always wanted to do it too. That's growing up, knowing. Just coon hunting, that's it. So ever since forever, I could walk. Yeah. So when, Jeff, when you started, was it just pleasure hunting then for the most part? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, pretty much. And Larry, he went and bought a dog up there on that picture called River, River Ben Rufus. And I started taking him to a bunch of hunts, won quite a bit with him. And he kind of got old and he went and bought the Slam it left the dog that I won the nationals with. Do you remember what year that was? Uh, 98. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you just looked. Yeah, yeah. 98. Mm-hmm. So that was your first first dog you got competition? Uh, the Rufus dog yep. probably was, yeah. Then uh, he ended up, uh, I guess we went through a couple other ones probably. I mean, oh, female we had pretty mean, but she'd do a lot of winning. We called her old critical Kate, but... Uh, we had several other ones, but that was the one probably won pretty well everywhere you went. You won, win some big hunts with him? Yeah. You yeah. remember? I won the Nationals with him and placed him in the World Hunt several times. What was uh, the Spring Classic when you wanted to open her? Yeah, we hunted the Spring Classic I did with him. It was just a $50 entry hunt, but we hunted for everything and won like $7,800 just to that. And that was back in yeah. 97 or something. Which, for people that might not be sure, that's a lot of money for that time period. It, now it's... Yeah, it was back in. They probably hunted 300 dogs. Yeah. You know, and uh, he, uh, we hunted off of everything. That was an uh, added purse cow cutter and everything. Casey, when did you start competition hunting? Oh, Bill. I was 12 years old. We had Hillbilly Deluxe, and uh, I used to walk on every cast with Dad. My brother Cody was old enough. He was hunting his own dog, and i just walk along on every cast. And going back to the Spring Classic, Dad got in Friday night with Bill, hunted off and won it. When we got done, Dad said, why don't you hunt him tomorrow? And I've never hunted in a hunt, but I knew the dog. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was like, yeah, cocky 12-year-old. <laughs> yeah, I'll go out and win. And uh, I hunted him that night and drew a three-dog cast out of all the, all the dogs there. You know, you usually get a four-dog cast. There's only, you know, don't know the numbers, but I got lucky doing that. I drew two really good guys. and Needless to say, I drew three coons, and they didn't do nothing. They quit. And I ended up with 900-plus and got in the final four that night, the first hunt I you know, 100, 100 and some dogs with yeah. Bill. And uh, that's probably, you know, my most memorable win into, you know, it was just crazy how that worked out. And I didn't really hunt much after that in the hunts. So I was probably about 14. I got Image, my first dog, and I started hunting him. And that's so when I started, you know, just hunting in the $30 hunts and little hunts with him. Now that you've done quite a bit of winning since then, do you – Looking back, do you think it really sank in at the moment when you were in your first competition hunt, what you achieved? Or No, I was, <laughs> I was arrogant, cocky, and, you know, being 12, I just, you know, being that I just, I knew I was going to win, you know, like being 12 years old, it didn't, like, I was expected to, you know, but looking back, it's really crazy that it happened, <laughs> especially me not knowing nothing but him. I remember... We cut loose, and Dad, of course, walked with us, and Bill struck, and the mother dog struck, and Dad told me, you know, don't get excited about treating him, you know, make sure he's treated. And he wheeled around, just lo- died, treated, located, and I, I treated him as soon as he located, and he about came out <laughs> of his boots. But I do remember that. It's pretty easy, you know. He was a good dog. I didn't really do nothing. Just strike and treat him. Yeah, that's all you had to do. I mean, lucky. Yeah, I can remember that they, uh, two that he brought, they was tore up because they got beat by a dog older than the person hunting them. Yeah. <laughs> they were saying, they, 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 they,
That's pretty funny. But you said you've been walking along on. Yeah. So you had an idea of how yeah. it worked, but you the, weren't like a seasoned no, handler, obviously. I, no, <laughs> I didn't. You know, know when the tree and strike and how to argue with everybody. Hell, I was just. I guess when I was just out there to be out there. I don't know why he did it. Put me right in the fire, but worked out. Didn't know any different. No. no. <laughs> now knowing what you do now, it's probably be a little different. But oh yeah, I probably would have lost. Now <laughs> trying to do too much. Yeah, because I remember we hunted off. He walked along, and we I made him hunt it off, and I won the whole thing with him. And at that last tree, I told him, I said, well, heck, you just hunt him tomorrow. Good decision. It worked out. <laughs> yeah, it was the only hunt I ever hunted him, and I had a better winning percentage with him than you did. <laughs> it wouldn't take much. <laughs> How did you start that dog? Did you get him already? Did you buy him already going? Or did you raise him? Or No, we bought him off of a Jody Slusher. Uh, actually, I didn't even want him when we bought him. Cody <laughs> liked them clover dogs and liked them white dogs, and we was pretty good buddies with Jody and he always pestered Jody for that dog and that dog and Jody would never get rid of him. Finally one day Jody called me and said, hey, if you want that dog for that boy, I'll sell him to you for $3,000. I said, well, bring him to the house. <laughs> That's how. And I actually, I think we, I, he brought him like on a Friday night, if I'm not mistaken. And we took him Saturday up to Greenville to a 500 ad and hunted off and won it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the very next day. So going from there, what was your next competition dog after the first two you listed? Well, I had actually I had a I had some way before them that a female uh, called Kentucky River Six Pack, El Nunnerman, and owned her there, and I hunted a lot for him. She probably was as as good as a person wanted to follow. I had her in the top six of PKC World Hunt. And Al had wild time in too. So uh, we ended up drawing out. That's before they separated dual owners and we ended up drawing out together. <laughs> so I just started getting, they both hunted so hard, instead of losing one and not getting back, six was kind of old. We just withdrew her and I just left Al go straight to the final three and he ended up winning it. But I ended up taking six out in open hunt and winning it. That night was her after I withdrawed her down there. That's crazy. <laughs> but she was a good one. Yeah. Thinking back, did you hunt very many females? No. No, mostly males? That seems to be very common amongst people, especially in competition hunts. But they ain't got enough heart. I like one little different people. I like one crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want them to be treated right in front of the woods. I want them out of there. So that's is that probably your... Uh, other than obviously having a coon when they tree, is that probably your number one trait you look for? Is yeah. just their heart? Yeah. What about you, Casey? Is that? Yeah, I mean, I got to have one that's, you know, not going to quit me, not going to give up, you know, as long as they're out there trying, hustling. That's, you know, the main thing with me. But they all mess up when you don't want them to and do dumb <laughs> stuff. So it's hard to find a perfect, but for sure, being by theirself quick and in a hurry and having a coon. You said you won nationals in 98. I've won it three times so far. Was that the first time? Or? First time, yes. So what What was the next one? Oh, was it Shard of Bone? Bone. Post the land bone I, I won it with. Next. I don't know, 2016, 2017, yeah, uh, 20 somewhere. And then two, not the next year, but the following year you won it with Shard. Yeah. I don't know where that fell. Bone will come from... Uh, me and Randall had him. Well, Randall pretty well on DP, just pretty well just let me do what I want to with him. He just, he don't. But uh, he was about as good as one could be too. He had he had more heart and drive, and you could ask for him one. Something that probably doesn't happen very much with coon hunting, where you have a dad and obviously you growing up with competition hunting. What like before you were in your first competition hunt? Like when you were just go hunting throughout the week, did you do anything to help prepare him, knowing that one day he would do it, or just taking hunting, <laughs> just threw threw him out there? He was on his own. <laughs> we, we fight more than when we're pleasure hunting than anything. <laughs> argue. Uh, no, I just he had a pretty good buddy down the road here, but he ain't with us anymore. That he hunted with quite a bit. They just coon hunted. Yeah. Yeah, Dad. Dad and my brother Cody. You know, I wasn't. I got image talking back. I was 
13. It was out of my brother's old dog, Pete. We raised him here at the house, and they'd be going at a hunt or something, and I didn't have my license, and Tim just lived right down the road, his name was, and we'd go hunting every night. He'd take me, and <laughs> we just hunted him, hunted him, and hunted him. Wasn't, I mean, <laughs> if I had him now, I'd have killed him, you know, put up <laughs> with a lot of stuff, and, you know, I just kept hunting. We just hunted, and, I mean, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be sitting here either as long as my dad, along with my dad. I mean, he took me whenever I wanted, hunted as long as I wanted. I mean, hunted a lot harder back then. We hunted about every night together, and he passed away probably about six years ago now. And he always told me he was going to win something big and stuff, and, you know, I you know, thought he would too, you know, him telling me that. And then 2017, I wanted to senior show down the truck with him. <laughs> it was a year after he died, and that was really special to me, being Tim helped me with him and did mainly all the work with him. I didn't know <laughs> nothing. And uh, I know he sees it, and, you know, oh, Orange is out of him too, and winning with him, it, it's really special. It's why I, like, keep hunting him and stuff because of him. So Yeah, that's, that that's great for people to hear because, I mean, some people listen to this or see the videos and stuff, they might know – like a kid or someone close to them that might be interested right. in it Absolutely. that they could take out and Absolutely. at least give them a chance to right. go. Yeah, <laughs> and if you are going to do that, make sure you take them when the weather's good <laughs> and you have a good dog and you're going to a good place. So their first experience right. isn't walking two miles to a hole in the ground when it's five degrees below zero or something. Right. Give them a good first experience because I don't know about you guys, but my first experience was a, a awesome first experience right. which it made it was a blessing and a curse because then the pups i got after that it's like that other dog treed three in like 10 minutes what is, what is this pup doing you know what i mean <laughs> oh, so you God. start with a really good one it's good because it gives you a good measuring stick and you kind of know what they should be but then you have to realize not all dogs are going to be the same cody had a real good dog Old Pete there that he, when he first started hunting, he hunted him. Uh, if he would have had him known what he know now, it's hard to tell him what he could have won the world with him. He was about as good as one could be, but he was a little kid hunting him and just learning. But he won a lot with him, but if he'd know what he knows now and had him, it would be a different story. Yeah, and the hunts are totally different than what they were even five years ago. The <laughs> opportunities you got now, I mean endless so it's great to see yeah pretty much if you're able to drive and afford to do it you can do it oh, almost absolutely. every day of the week no. absolutely yeah you know and hunting with mr stubborn beside me my <laughs> dad he's gonna make you know he always had to have a good dog or you know better off not even the hunt so i mean he's drove that in the both of us to have a pretty decent dog to hunt know what we're doing but he's pretty good to us the most part be a little rough on us <laughs> do you raise very many pups, or you just kind of get them after they're started, a little of both? A little bit of both. I ain't got to, I mean, a lot of times time I raise them, I'm done hating them before they're big enough to hunt. Yeah. You know, I just got a real kind of short fuse with them. <laughs> and I'm, I think most people have some of that, because you get one of them that might start doing stuff and show you a lot at five or six months old, and some of them act like they're the dumbest dog in the world until they're about two and then they might do so or they might not mm -hmm. you just never know but if you if you do have a pup how do you like starting them or progressing them from where they're at i, I do all the I training think. he don't train them That's me. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's just uh, i think a lot to do with them pups is either they got it or they don't i mean yeah. you can start you can take them from the first time to see what they got mainly but do you hunt them with another dog or hunt them by themselves? Uh, once they get, if they are a tree in, I take them, keep hunting them by themselves until, you know, they get consistent on training a coon, doing the same tree, and doing the right stuff and worry about being around another dog when that time comes. But no. I don't like to mess with them anymore either. Hell, I don't like to hunt much anymore at all. <laughs> That's always something because there's some people that they'll take a pup and they'll hunt it with two or three other dogs right. and for a long time. And then there's some other people that, they don't see another dog until they're two years old and basically finished. Right. So I just, that's something. I know both people have success doing it both ways, but I prefer hunting them by themselves personally. Right. Yeah. But that's Absolutely. just. I had Image, which was out of Pete. We raised him. 
And then O, out of image, he was probably, what, 10, 11 months old when I got him? Probably. And uh, that's about the last two that fairly young that we've, you know, had all the way through. Usually get, we've had a lot, like, kind of get <laughs> old now on dogs. They're getting up in age. <laughs> we had a few young ones here that act pretty good. He's been messing with, but now I'm just hunting the same old dogs. Like you said, it's hard to take, get starting a pup when you got one you can go yeah. out and tree coons with and have fun with. You've had a lot of good dogs over the years. Can you? You've already talked about a couple of them. Can you go through and just list some of your most successful dogs that you've had? Hmm. I don't know. They won't be in all the same order, but uh, Post Land Bone, uh, Slam It Lefty, uh, Shot Through the World, Hillbilly Deluxe. Uh, image, heart, door, so what? PBR, O, O, River Bend Rufus, Kentucky River Six Pack, bunch of them. So, you said Joe? And yes. Joe. Set him up, Joe. Probably, uh, O, Heddle, Casey. Casey, what about Casey? Buck Creek Loud. Buck Creek Loud. Had way more than I thought. <laughs> mm. <laughs> We've had a pile. I don't know if they're good ones, but those ones we had had a lot more that weren't as good too. I guess. Well, if you're thinking of their names right now, there's a reason why you're thinking of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't. My, I mean, I'm probably in consensus with me, Dad, and Cody. Probably the favorite dog we've had since we've all been alive has been Bill. Just the dog, Bill Billy Deluxe. I mean, he's he was pretty partial. Just his personality and dog may not have been the best one, but. I'd say when you probably the one that we were most attached to, us three. Him, my old lefty. My, your mother was partial, probably lefty than any of them. Yeah. But you guys was little then. You don't know much about him. When, whenever you can come over here and add. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cody. Cody's the, uh, he's I'm the about, I'm man. about to do need a break. <laughs> I was ready to get in the stories about you cheating and stuff. That's the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got, not to interrupt the cut, but I really have a good memory of walking along with Dad. Probably one of my favorite ones. What happened on a cast, he was hunting Buck Creek Loud, and once again, the Spring Classic was right here. We were hunting the finals off, and Loud, we cut, they cut loose, and I was 10, 9 years old. Heck, I didn't know, whatever, but. Loud gets treed right out of a truck on a fence row, and two dogs come in there and tree with him. One's out still running. We get in there to the tree, and it's a fence row, so there's a fence. And them two dogs are on one side. Loud was on the other side of the fence. Well, I was back there with the rest of the cast. Dad crawled over the fence, kind of made some ruckus, fell. Didn't think nothing of it. They said, are you ready to shine? I said, yeah. Find the coon instantly. It's on a fence row. They're like, walk your minute and cut loose because the other dog was still running. Well, they walked a minute. I'm on. Dad's was the only one on the side of the fence row, and they cut loose. When it gets up, and it probably wasn't about the minute it was up, and Loud was treed a half a mile behind us. I thought, what? And the, they're like, what in the hell? How fast was that? And hell, was you know, cocky, like, yeah, he's that quick, you know, all this that. I didn't know what happened. Hunt gets over with. He ended up winning. <laughs> when he went to cross that fence, when he fell, it Loud got scared and took off running. <laughs> Left the tree. They didn't even know it. Scored that coon, and as soon as I got loose, he was treated with another one. They had no idea. That was probably one of my favorite ones I've seen him do. But, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that happens out there. I mean, he's got way more than I can do. <laughs> so both of you have been competing for a really long time. Do you have any advice for if, if there's someone new getting into it or thinking about getting into it? Good dog always helps. Makes yeah. everybody look good. Yeah, yeah there, I mean, there's not much you can do anymore. There's, you know, you got to have a good dog. Everybody's got a good dog you hunt with in these hunts. So you need a lot of luck, a lot of breaks. Stay persistent. I mean, you can't win them all. I've lost way more than I've ever won. Everybody's got a dog with Trey Coon, but there are very few special ones. Oh, well, yeah, but, I mean, any night you can be beat by anything, you know. But, yeah, absolutely. When you're getting a dog ready for a hunt, do you – take it kind of like a case-by-case -case basis based on that dog, or do you have, like, you hunt him every night leading up to or every other night, or just kind of go off what that dog's doing? Well, yeah, if I'm getting ready for a big hunt and I'm going to go stay two or three days, yeah, I'll hunt him pretty hard. I'll even let him sleep in the truck and get him out in the morning just like you would if he was staying at a motel somewhere. And if 
I don't know. Probably all don't mean nothing, but it makes you feel better. I just wonder because everyone has different ways of doing it, but you guys have you've been doing it for quite a long time, so it's good to get this information out to people that might be thinking about doing it or are new to it. Yeah, I usually just let him hunt them and do all the work. <laughs> I show up and hunt them on the hunt. Michael Jordan didn't. Uh, he didn't prepare the basketball court or nothing before he played. He just showed up and played. So it's kind of how I put myself in with him. Do you have a certain bloodline that you think that you've kind of stuck with more over the others, or you just kind of go based off of the individual dog and what they do? I like the clover dogs myself. Yeah. What about you? Uh, well, it's flat runs, what I've always hunted. Pete, my brother's older dog, was flat run. Pete's where it started. And he was sunrise bred. God, he knows the bottom side. I don't pay attention to much of that, but uh, I got Image, which was directly off of Pete, and I hunted him, and I got set him up Joe, and I started hunting him, and he was off of Neosho River Cuz, so I went a little different direction there, and then I got O, which is off of Image, and I hunted him, so I'm pretty much stuck to the flat, our, I consider it our bloodline, but yeah. it's not, you know, but. If I could go that route, that's what I like hunting. Pups off of that stuff. So, But I'd hunt anything if it was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so. You ain't going to work a 40-hour job and make a good dog and have a good dog because that stuff don't mix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just think of you, think of everybody does all the winning and, and does everything. Gets most people that ain't, you know, ain't got a job to go to. It's a lot of work. Unless you do it, you don't, people don't really think about that because... You're, you're out. Obviously, we love doing this, but you're also away from your family, and you do this at night. So then you're not sleeping. Right. So you're just you're tired and run downs, so and the time you do spend with your family, you probably feel like crap. Yeah. If you're, but if you're out there, eight ten hours a night running one down and <laughs> doing everything to make him a good one, it's harder than any job anybody goes to. I promise. You, if you do it. Yeah. I don't know how much running you got left in you. That much. You know. <laughs> That's what the side by side's for. Yeah. <laughs> Yell at me to get out and go do it. <laughs> He's got a bad hip. Well, at least he has you to do it. <laughs> Not all the time. <laughs> That's what trainer in the background's for. <laughs> I think we need to get Cody up here. He knows all the pedigrees. He knows everything in and out about them. <laughs> yeah, he can break it down for you. He's the paperwork man. Seriously, come over here if you want. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn mine over to him, but I just got one suggestion for you. The next person you go and and do this with, I've got a person I think you ought to really go. They are they're good hunters and they trained a lot of their dogs and and they're just good people. Is Chuck and Coke and Dunlap? I think the yeah. next time you do one, it might be a good place to stop. Yeah, I've heard I've had a few people suggest that. Yes. So that's. He's uh yeah, he's about a lot with me and my boys. He's they hunted with him. They grew up together in the youth hunts, and I mean, they say they're close to the same age. Yeah, right? Col- they are. I think Colton and Cody's about the same age, maybe, or but younger than you. Yeah, he's like maybe a year right in between me and them. But them three boys, Chuck will probably tell you the same. Me and him just kind of watched all three of them just grow up in them hunts, and I mean. The fine people and fine dog people. No. Yeah. Be good people to talk to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they hunt their own line of dogs, and Chuck knows them way back. Well, people probably don't even remember them. Yeah. They're just a good set of people that you'd be a good person yeah. to go to. Today, I was actually going through my messenger and writing everything down on a calendar so I can try and keep track of. Mm-hmm. Who I'm getting with. A little hilly down there. Yeah. Ooh-hoo. But I'm going to turn this <laughs> over to Cody for a little bit. And let him ramble off here a little bit with you guys. But before you go, what what's the current dog you got right now? That you're? Do you have anything you're pushing right now? Uh, we got Flat Run Osage Orange that me and Dad own together. And uh, we're hunting him. And we got Set Him Up Joe still that I turned over to Dad so he'd have something to hunt. Yeah. <laughs> And got a good one coming out. And yeah, we got a couple young dogs coming good. And my brother's hunting for a guy named David Vanover. He's got some nice dogs, and he's hunting them. And we're just hunting them and 
seeing what home we go and go to next. You know, like you said, there's so many of them. You don't yeah. don't go the all. We don't get to go the all of them, but we go the few and have fun still. Always try to keep some around. But Orange and Joe's the main two that we own. That you know we're pushing. You know, Rick Marshall owns Joe with Dad and Randall Drew. They've been huge help to our family and hunting and main reason why we're able to do what we do and hunt. You know, I know Dad and Cody can speak for this too. Uh, we've had probably some of the greatest people behind us that we've hunted for and been around. And without them, we wouldn't be here talking. You know, you don't get to talk to them, but they're more the main reason behind it than even we are. Anybody can show up and hunt a dog about, but they're big help and you know, getting us there and making sure we got a good dog still and just great people. Yeah. So, a lot, of, a lot of people behind the, you know mainstream that help out to get there that don't you know get to talk and on something like this but yeah they're great people and larry dead starting out with larry and oh, anybody yeah. in, in between we've hunted for it's been always great top notch yeah larry's as good as they get over the years was there a registry that you focused more on hunting or did you just kind of hunt whatever pkc's but all i really have a hundred much yeah i just wondered because yeah it's over the years, it's changed. Certain registries were bigger back then that don't even exist now, and mm -hmm. it's always rules are always changing. So it's just interesting to see kind of where people were then versus now. Yeah, we uh, pro sports came, and you know I really enjoy hunting them and hunt a few of them. And UKC is even getting bigger now, and I know Dad's got Joe qualified for the tournament of champions. We'll hunt him in it, and uh, yeah, I mean they definitely. PKCs help grow to make other ones, you know, rise with them. Mm -hmm. So there's more options, but PKCs, you know, mainly what we hunt. And I think that holds like the prestige to it. Like the money, you know, you can hunt for a hundred thousand or you can hunt for fifty dollars, but to say you won the PKC World Hunt or the PKC National Super Stakes it means something. Yeah, I just wondered because it's neat looking back through like the old magazines and stuff and seeing because back then there'd be three or four hundred dogs at a hunt. Absolutely. So it's just, it's hard to tell and because there's so many people I'm sure hunted mostly just for the hide money. Oh, yeah. And they, then maybe they went and took and entered their dog in a competition. Now it's, you, you can't you can't give a coon away anymore. <laughs> no. no one will take them. So if. You'll it, probably be sitting in a place that's had more coons than you would <laughs> There's been a few out here, that's for sure. I used to enjoy that more than anything. Me and Cody would wake up for school and dad would always lay all the coons out on the tailgate. From, you know, we'd hunt with him till you know, 10, 11 o'clock, then he'd hunt till daylight, around see how many coons he killed, and he'd have them laid out, and watching him skin them and put them up. I really enjoyed that, I know Cody did as well. That's something that I miss a lot, really. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I think the most we killed that one year was like 520. Yeah, that's from <laughs> November 10th to come in. The yeah, end of yeah January. the 10th to yeah. end of January. But that's from back when it was worth money. Right. We killed them for money. We lived probably on it that winter, through the winters and shit yeah. back yeah. in. It's, I don't know if what effect that's going to have, like if it's ever, the fur market's ever going to come back. But like people used to trap a lot too. We used to see people out mm -hmm. running trap. Like oh, yeah. uh, at least I'm not far from you guys and I'm right. sure it's the same here. Like there's maybe one other guy I know that sometimes squirrel hunts and he does coon hunt but he squirrel hunts more now because he's older and he doesn't go hardly much anymore and then my cousin other than that there's not many people out doing any sort of anything besides deer and turkey right. or mm -hmm. duck hunting has gotten bigger in the last yeah. 10 years but other than that no there's not many no there yeah there's probably a handful of people that used to hunt just a few miles around here now i mean we got, you know, you can travel a little bit, but we're about the only people that hunt in this area over around here. Nobody hunts right in here anymore. Coon hunts. Coon right. Hunts. Have you have you noticed a difference in the population from back then to now? Like, is it very much different? No, I like try to keep them thinned down anyways. <laughs> well, I will say Tim, who I was referring to earlier yes. that passed away. He had a policy. If we treated one, he killed us. We killed every <laughs> single. So a few of these little woods is like right around the house might have, a, but we got so many coons. But he would kill them. He loved it. He didn't matter. Yeah. Didn't matter what they did, how they did it, if they needed it or not. He he was shooting them. That's yeah. something I, people don't understand. Is like, especially back then, 
you guys did that. He did that. And a lot of people killed a lot of coon and skinned them and sold them. And we still have just overrun with them everywhere. Oh, yeah. So people you see someone post a picture with like five coon on their tailgate <laughs> and people get all bent out of shape. It's like, well, they probably hunted a good dog for 45 minutes. Yeah. And sure. two sections, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's people that if they don't coon hunt, they don't understand, yeah. especially in this area, the right time of year, they're just, they're everywhere. Right. It'll be off the train tonight. I'm oh, yeah. The yeah. Fall, That's I've. That. In my latest podcasts and videos, it's if you're hunting this time of year when they're not rutting mm-hmm. and it's been cold, it got 35 below zero wind chills a couple of days ago, and then it's up and down, up and down, snow, white, like yeah. it's, it'll be rough, I'm sure. I might have to do some good editing on them dogs <laughs> in the night. Well, it is, it's probably still foggy out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't see out yeah. in front of you. Yeah, we'll have fun no matter what. Yeah. I'm just making them have to go a little farther to look for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, maybe the coon won't won't know they're coming then. Be right up on them. <laughs> He'll need one like that to tree it probably. Do your dogs open much on track? Tight mouth, kind of average? <sighs> I so, like them tight. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Joe, when he we hunt him, he's, he's not stoned still, but... He, if he gets treated tonight, he probably won't make a ground bark. He may open a few times. He's real tight mouth. Oh, when he's looking his best, he don't say a whole lot, but he can get in there and open up a little bit. But yeah. he, he don't say a whole – He none of them leave you barking or nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what he'll do. Heck, he might not go on. <laughs> <laughs> have you know, I've A few people I've talked to have said this. Have you noticed if you take kind of a younger dog and you're hunting it mostly by itself and then you put it in a competition hunt and other dogs start covering a bunch, have you, have you noticed that changes how they open – or if they might be more of an average dog, they start tightening up more? Yeah. No. Not them good ones. The good ones are off on their own anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I just wonder because I've heard a few people say that they had a dog that might be a higher-end strike dog, but then they've hunted them enough to where they get covered a bunch, and then they kind of shut up a little bit more just on track. Right. I didn't know if you noticed that. No. Sometimes you kill them a few more coons, it tightens them, tightens them up when they get older. but Yeah. No. I've noticed that with squirrel dogs, especially, yeah. especially if we take like an older coon hound and squirrel hunt it, like they'll open up like they would normally on a coon. But then if you start shooting them squirrel out in the daytime, they just about shut up on track and right. they start using their eyes a lot more, mm-hmm. which is another, is another, something else fun you can do. If you have an old dog that it's just an old dog, you want to get out and get some exercise. Right. If they can tree a coon at night, usually squirrels pretty easy for them. <laughs> and some of them prefer that sometimes anyways, you hunt them long enough and be training some squirrel nests on rough yeah. nights. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know about that. I tried to beat mine off. Of <laughs> uh, I got another good story, not to change the topic. Just hit me about me and my dad hunting together. So, I mean, people that know me and him, <laughs> we're a lot alike. But uh, we were hunting one night down the road, and I don't, he took a dog, and I didn't take a dog or something. And we were, I forget where we were hunting, some young dog. And we cut loose, and it went in there and did did something stupid. And, uh, he, of course, he was mad about that. And I said, yeah, if we had so-and-so out here, we wouldn't have had this problem. I was probably 13 once again. <laughs> so we got in this huge argument, and it's probably uh, two miles from the house. Mm-hmm. Well, we got in that argument. I just said, <laughs> screw it, I'm going to walk home. <laughs> I took off, I took <laughs> off right through the woods, started cutting across the fields. I mean, I seen him driving around, and I'd, like, get down and hide. And I eventually <laughs> made it home. And... <laughs> Yeah, that's about uh, sum up me and him hunting together. <laughs> At least you knew how to get home. Yeah, I knew how to get home. I was familiar with that. I was ready to get away from him, you know. Yeah, me and him hunting together. We we argue more than I've argued with anybody else. <laughs> My brother too. I mean, we don't that too. So when it comes to hunting, we try to stick away from each other, and we don't get in a fight. So that's another topic. If you're getting a dog ready for a hunt, I assume you probably hunt them by themselves, anyways. Yeah, I mean, like for the that, most part. Yeah, like Orange and Joe, they're old now, so you know, there's no training really involved. Yeah, it it pretty much don't matter if you hunt three of them or four of them. It's like hunting them by themselves. They ain't never gonna be around. Yeah. Anyway. yeah, they ain't gonna be within hearing of them. You right. Yeah, and that's probably that's another reason why I like hunting them by themselves when they're young, especially because a lot of them, especially walkers, are naturally independent, anyways. So if you, you turn a young dog loose with an old dog, then they're just hunting by themselves anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, that shit's all bred in them. <laughs>
Yeah. A lot of people ask me questions training related and I try and just tell them like you are just giving them exposure and kind of letting them to they're they're writing the story and doing it on their own. You're just giving them like the pen and paper to write their story. They're doing it. You can increase their odds. Like if you got a, a pup that is just starting to tree and if it's tomorrow is going to be 10 below zero and then the next day is going to be 60, don't take them on the 10 below night. Exactly. Set them up and take them on a – just give them the best right. chance to not do something stupid. Right. That's – but I think it's because it's dog training. People think like, oh, you're – you're training that dog to do that, but it's it's a genetic trait that the dog either has or doesn't. So do you do you compete anymore? Oh yeah. You said he said you had a bad hip. I don't know. <laughs> That's just teasing. Just me. <laughs> I mean, he shows up. I don't know about oh, competing. Geez. He's there. But yeah, he gets out still. Do you have any hunts coming up? You're going to be going to. Chuck hunt. Where, where's that at? Arkansas. Think, yeah, they year. moved it to Arkansas. Okay. Yeah, it's a truck hunt. I mean. I've won it twice. He's only won it once, so maybe he can tie me. But <laughs> I'm looking to, you know, stay ahead of him on something. Give me an edge. Probably both get beat pretty quick and fight all the way home about what <laughs> how dumb each other are. But we'll be there. What dog are you hunting? I'm gonna well, oh as of now. But if he makes me mad in between there, I'm, <laughs> I'm quick to change. I'll, I'll grab Joe, but I'll be hunting Owen. and he'll be hunting Joe. How are they? Are they similar in how they hunt? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very, yeah. Uh, Joe's a little more tight mouth. I know. Oga struck a little better, but how old are they? Joe be nine at the end of May, and O be six in June or July. Yeah. Uh, o probably comes up off the ground a little quicker. Yeah. So you were saying something. Your dogs are getting older. You said you had something. You got any pups right now? Anything you're? I got a female out of Cody's Thor dog. And she's she's pretty well the right kind. Yeah, how old is she? Uh, she uh, she's three, but uh, she will uh, play second in the one year old. Okay. Steak and stuff. Uh, Cody run her last year. They're about a month. Won a couple of thousand with her just in a month. Qualified her for everything, and she just kind of been sitting down, getting hunting, getting ready. But probably gonna push her a lot this year. I'm yeah. Sure she'll do a pile winner. <laughs> I got a I got a young pup. He's a he's a well, he's a year old. He hunts a one year old in the fall. A lot of image too that I gotta get going on. His name's Dale. He's a little bit of a head case, kind of aggravating. I need to hunt him a little more. But we got him. We got a young dog off Bill. That's been hunting. Yeah, we always get young dogs out here. None of them worth <laughs> shit, I guess. <laughs> we got a few. Young dogs usually aren't, and then the old ones. Yeah. Get old way too quick. Way too quick. <laughs> might, uh, I might be what I take tonight. Is that pup out of Bill? If you will, he he's the right kind of tree dog. Yeah. And stuff. Take him out. Show up the old dog. Hey, whatever you guys want to take out, we can take out. Young, old, no matter. Mm -hmm. I'll take him. I'll probably take him. I got I got another story. Jeez, I got all kinds. Yeah. Of, I, I love the talks. So That's you what got, you got me in the perfect thing. I'm the <laughs> talker out of the group. The other two are shy, so I'll sit here. They'll listen to this. This is another good one with me and my dad. So we were to we were to World Hunt. I don't know. <laughs> You're wanting to get up for this one. And uh, I made the semifinals, and I don't think he did that year. No, he didn't, because he sat in the truck. And uh, needless to say, I was winning by two coons, and they called timeout, and there's only like 20 minutes left. So I really had to cast one, you know, unless something dumb happened, which ended up did. So long story short, dog ended up coming back and beating me with that 20 minutes left and of course I'm aggravated I mean it's a world hunt semifinals and Joe I was hunting Joe he was really looking good and you know caught a bad deal and ended up getting beat so we go back to the room and slept and got up in the morning and he's we're going back and forth as always just <laughs> aggravated I'm right he's wrong I mean, it's vice versa so I remember we get up and get around and I Grabbed a chocolate milk carton from the lobby and we had it off. I was driving. Of course, he sleeps all the time. I'm always driving. <laughs> and uh, we get about home about a couple hours and I get off on the wrong exit. Just, <laughs> you know, we ain't said a word. We're both aggravated. Get off on the wrong exit. We pull in the gas station, fuel up and get turned back around. And he said something to me about something I did wrong, which I'm sure I did. But 
too bold headed and this gas station's packed and I grab that carton of milk and just turn back and sling it at him and it hits him it's like a bomb goes off right I mean there's 20 people pumping gas everything and we're just screaming at each other going crazy cussing arguing looking like idiots most people are staring well he goes in I do whatever we get back in the truck don't say another word till we get home and I said we end, I mean just like nothing ever happened we're hunting the next night together but there's another good one. I mean, Cody's, you know, I'm sure you, you, you got plenty more with him. I mean, he's a handful. Yeah, yeah you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Cody. Um, chubby. We call yeah. him Chubby. Yeah, I go by that, too. But uh, I, I'm i the one that usually gets the dogs ready for them, and they take over the fame. <laughs> yeah. When did you start hunting? I, I mean, I, I always went when I was young, and I don't know, probably – First time I went, I was probably five, six years old, and I I walked with Dad for years and cast, and uh, you know I I'd always go in and listen to all the questions on the panels and and try to learn as much as I could, you know, and I started hunting in the hunts. I was probably I don't know ten or twelve years old, and it just all went on from there. Do you remember the first hunt you were in? Yeah, the first hunt I ever hunted in was a uh, spring classic, and uh, they had a they had youth cast back then. They yeah, don't, they don't much anymore. And then they uh, whoever would win the most through that weekend, that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, would be that they had a youth champion overall champion for the weekend, and that was held in Upper, which is twenty minutes from the house, fifteen twenty minutes. So I could guide and all that and. I uh, I hunted that Pete dog. That was my first dog I hunted in the hunt, and I won my first cast I ever got entered in that night. And I, I think I, I won all three nights, and I won overall youth champion. And that year I uh, I just hunted in just local open hunts that year, and I placed him top six in the youth world, and Needless to say, I never won another cast after that in the youth world, but... I did win the youth world one time, though. Not time <laughs> I won yeah. it. Just <laughs> and I, I actually should have went to the final three that year, but I, I, I didn't really know a whole lot. I, I was just getting into them, and I made a, a bad call, and it cost me from going to the final three that year, but it is what it is, and that, that's about how I started. So you, are you still competing? Yeah, yeah, every now and then. I mean, I, I took a lot of big breaks over the years, and but I, I've always come back to it. Do you have a dog you're hunting right now? Uh, yeah, I've been hunting uh, a dog for my, my buddy David Vanover named uh, History Repeats Itself. I've been hunting him. Okay. But I, before that, uh, I had to kickstart my heart female, and I hunted her there for a couple of years, and... Uh, I sold her and then I started hunting for him. But and I mean I bounced around. I've hunted a lot of them over the years. But I, I'd like to stay with the clover dogs. And uh, I mean I've won everywhere from clover to track man to sunrise. I mean I've hunted them all. But I prefer a clover dog. I've the, just always liked the white dogs. Yeah. Does it looks you like the way they look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They always usually most generally got good mouths too. Yeah. Definitely. So what is, I'll start with you, Casey. What's probably the biggest thing you've learned? From Chubby or my dad? Or from your dad. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> uh, really, I mean, probably Cody, he's not like a big, like, you know, sit down, like, teach you something. It's more you just watch and observe what he does and just, like, always having a good dog, like the mindset, hunting him, doing it right, and just – Trying to do what he does, which I mean, I can't do what he does. He's he's the best as far as my eyes was coon hunting. But yeah, I mean, just observing everything he does and trying to copy his hunting. I mean, he knows more than I'll ever. He's forgot more than I'll ever knows with Cody. I mean, just hunting, hunting hard and making sure you got a good dog when you show up. Don't want to embarrass yourself. You're not gonna win them all. You're gonna get beat, but you can have a good dog and get beat, getting beat by a. You know another good dog but yeah just being prepared what about you sam and 
about the same. About the same. Yeah. I mean, if you mess up, he'll tell you. He ain't oh. afraid to yell <laughs> at you. He'll let you know what he's thinking. Yeah, he'll let sure. you know what you're thinking. Yeah, he'll sure. tell you what's on his mind. It's fun when he messes up and you get to. Oh yeah. It. <laughs> very very. Yeah. I, he he probably, can dish it out, but yeah, he can't he, take it. I doubt he. he can't take I, it at all. I don't know if he messes. He <laughs> might not really mess up, but you can find something and like angle it around in your favor, telling him he did it wrong. Oh yeah. As soon as you start in on him, it's like a bomb. Right? Oh yeah. We'll start with just pleasure hunting. What's your favorite pleasure hunting memory? Oh, with my dad? Oh, God. Just in general, pleasure hunting. Oh, all of them, yeah. It's probably, gonna, I mean, Tim, obviously. You know, every hunt I had with Tim. What? Oh, uh, yeah, every hunt I had with Tim, you know, special him passing away. He hunted a lot with Cody, too. I mean, he was like a grandpa to us, a dad to my dad, so that. But as far as hunting with my dad, probably the best. <laughs> God, I don't even <laughs> I won't know where to start. Yeah, uh, I got a really, like, one that, like, the walking home one's funny. I have did that more than once with him. One, I mean, heck it, I don't care. They can listen to this. This is funny. It's going to embarrass him. We were pleasure on one night, and uh, dog went in there and got treated. I don't even know what we're hunting. What we're hunting. Some dog I was young, and somebody might have been with us. I don't know. But I was shooting. This, it had three or four coons in the tree, and it was coon season. That's when we were keeping them. So I shoot the first one out. And I look out, you know, shoot the first one out, and I'm out of bullets. And, I, and uh, I was like, Dad, I need some more bullets. And he'd just stand down in the creek. He shit all over himself. He was shaking his head, saying, these are ruined. I mean, just shit himself. That was hilarious. I'll never forget that. Had to cut him off with a pocket knife. and That was funny. Oh, God. That, that was a good memory. Yeah. <laughs> He never was much for holding it in over the years. No, I mean, he, he's a circus in himself. I ain't looking at it. <laughs> like. Fall, we fell asleep a couple times hunting. Wake up, it's daylight. The dog's been treated for how long? Oh, God knows why. And he yells at you, asking him why you let him fall asleep. But, yeah, I mean, Cody's had a pile, too. I mean, Jesus, there's so, so many. many Could you narrow down one, Cody? What were your most <sighs> memorable moment? <laughs> we were squirrel hunting one time. I was real young, and... Uh, I don't know what happens. It's been a long time ago. I was really young, but uh, and uh, I don't know. We were hunting most of the day or whatever, and there's a lot of water and stuff. And the dog got treated way through there or whatever. I had the dog, one dog, and or whatever happened. Well, I took off one way and I went back to the truck, and he went and got the dog or whatever. And I, I, he thought I got lost and searched for me for hours. And I, he got back to the truck and went to drive around to look for me. And I popped up out of the back seat, and it's like he's seen a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty good one. Uh, Do you guys squirrel hunt anymore at all? Yeah, we we got a couple squirrel dogs still. Yeah, we've always done that over the years. Yeah. Not not as much. I mean, Dad competition on it back when PKC had a squirrel division, won the world hunt twice. But as far as competition hunting anymore in the squirrel dogs, we don't really just do it for fun anymore. Really. Yeah. What breed? Oh, uh, we got a we got a original Mountain Cur, and I got one a young dog. He's out of he's actually out of rodeo, and uh, which is a right. walker, and his mom is a. Half cur, half bird dog. Yeah. He, he's a pretty nice young dog, too. We got them, too. The cur, uh, she's three or four years old now. She's a nice dog. The, um, you score one to Jim and Bow Dog. That, yeah. I don't know if you're from. So, Dad owned Hard Knocking Tom, which was what he oh. won the world hunt with twice, huh. which was what Bo's out of and all that stuff. So, we've had dogs out of him throughout the years, too, but that's what we got now. Yeah, I didn't know. That's where he came from. Yeah, That's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that see all it. started right here. Mm-hmm. That's funny because I see a lot of the, like I in February I go to South Carolina the squirrel hunt they'd have yeah. down there every year mm-hmm. and. Like that's where I've seen like the JMO dogs is down in that yeah. area. Yeah. I didn't know they yeah. come all, all the way from. Up yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's pretty cool. Do you guys deer hunt at all? No. No, no. My big, si- my big buck hunters. Does. My my youngest sister does. Her and dad. Well, if you squirrel hunt and coon hunt, there's not. No, there's unless not you just don't want to have a family or a exactly, life. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I turkey hunt in the spring. Uh, I'd rather coon hunt than turkey hunt. If I'm gonna be honest, I love it, but I still, you know, 
it's hard because I travel a lot in turkey hunt, so you know I gotta like plan as a, I'm a coon hunt this weekend at a hunt, can't turkey hunt, so my spring's super super busy. Plus, you know I kind of work too, so got that on top of it. But yeah, then keeping these guys straight, it's a job. So. <laughs> so what dogs are we gonna take out tonight? Do you guys know? Well, I'd say we'll probably start with O. Once he embarrasses me, we'll get Joe out. Not, he shouldn't embarrass me. He's old and faithful, I guess. But if he does, then we might take old Thor out if Cody wants to take him, that bell pup. Heck, we got 20 of them. We'll when just they're, pick when they're get done getting embarrassed, we'll just break Just old, take them all at once. Break yeah. old Thor out of retirement. <laughs> yeah. That way we can put a coon on the camera. Yeah, <laughs> finally turn loose. <laughs> at least make it look good. I don't know what kind of editing you can do. but yeah, the way He ain't gone. been turned loose. Oh, as foggy as he was getting on the drive here. <laughs> <laughs> might might not have a choice. You never know. But do you guys have anything you want to add before we get off here? Uh, I mean, uh, whatever you have. I like. answer anything you want to know. But I mean, they've touched uh, most of the basics. I guess I'll start with you. You, if you can remember, all the bigger bigger hunts that you've won. Oh geez, we're gonna <laughs> be here a while. I've won so much. Oh, uh, I've won the. PKC truck hunt, senior showdown twice, once with Image, and then O. I won the s spring three-year-old super stakes with O. Won the Walker Breed Championship with Joe. Won the youth world hunt with Joe. Placed third in the actual world hunt with Thor, Cody's dog. Won the state hunt, PKC four times, I think I've won the PKC state nice. hunt four. I won, yeah, I won the national pup breed with Image race. I won the national mail race with Joe. I just won uh, a pro classic in Missouri for twenty thousand with O three or four weeks ago. Uh, placed in a lot of stuff. Uh, won some, you know, whatever. I I think that's a lot of it. Shoof. Did you say the truck hunts? Yeah, I've won the trucks, truck yeah, hunts twice. Youth World Hunt, won the State Hunt, been national youth leader a couple times. Won a lot of you know local hunts, and I think I'm. A, over 200,000 lifetime earnings just in PKC, which isn't a lot really, I guess, but it's a little bit. Dad's one way more. I mean, trying to catch him as if Cody. I mean, Dad, my dad, he ain't on here no more. I guess I can tell what he won. Yeah. He's won the Nationals three times. Uh, won the Super Stakes. Won the Truck Hunt. He's won several pro hunts back when they had the pro division. He's won the State Hunt couple times he's placed second in the pkc world hunt he's got second a couple times in other truck hunts lots of them pro sport gosh i don't need a pile of other stuff yeah i mean that's amazing i mean he's won there's been a coon hunt he's won a lot of them he ain't going to chain but i'm catching him i'm gonna catch him before long i just got a little ways to go <laughs> <laughs> what about you I've always felt bad for him and always let them win when it comes down to the finals. <laughs> but uh, I've been there a lot. I've been in the final four of the truck hunt twice. Um, once me and Dad were in it together, the final four together, we were both in it and both lost. So, I mean, that was cool. Uh, I've been in the final cast of the Super Stakes. I've won the state race. I've won the state hunt. Top six of the youth world. Um multiple pro classics um i've been in the quarter and semi-finals of the world nationals. multiple times the nationals um probably about it all right well he, he might he's may have beat me in a hunt before too i guess that's pretty pretty <laughs> impressive if you can beat me yeah. but the only time he's ever beat me is when <laughs> i've let him win <laughs> yeah when we gotta draw each other in a hunt that's fun too yeah that's yeah that's real fun yeah, me and Dad's been on a couple. Me and Cody's been on a couple. We've been in the, every time we've ever been in a Final Four together, we always try to split. That way it don't get down to that. Yeah, we split a lot of them. But yeah, we, you know, some we've we all on. three been in the, in the Final Fours together quite a bit, actually. Yeah, always split. Cause we'll if all, not, we'll get beat. <laughs> it, it, yeah. We'll get beat. We'll get beat by the fourth dog, or it'll be a bloodbath. And I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they couldn't pay anyone enough to judge that cast. Yeah, yeah, you got that. And you problem ain't gonna too. find a judge for that. Nobody wants to do that. But yeah, it's interesting, and that <laughs> that's probably the reason we try to try to keep one, keep them all 
deep and alone and try to stay away from each other when we do have to hunt yeah. with each other. <laughs> I'd rather get, I don't, I don't, like, no one likes to lose, but, I mean, I'm fine with it, it happens enough, but damn sure don't want to get beat by chubby or dad <laughs> just the, the harassment you get around the house yeah, it's if it's for five dollars or ten thousand it's horrible itself so try yeah, to it don't matter that. what it pays it's yeah. just a bragging right yeah you have to live with it the rest of your life yeah <laughs> i did beat casey in the state hunt that year though. yeah he, he did what, what were you hunting? Thor, he ain't never beat him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want more with Thor than he has, but we can start arguing now. <laughs> I'd rather see one of them win before me. Like, you know, I, you know, obviously, when it comes down to it, they can speak for that, too. A lot of it's joking around. Oh, yeah, but for it, sure. it is definitely a bloodbath, though. Like, don't underestimate that. But I'm more excited to see Dad or my brother win as I am myself. So, <laughs> A little bit of a sarcasm. Yeah, but. especially if one of us can't win, we we want to see the others win yeah. for sure. Tree well, Joe. <laughs> I think it's a good time to get off of here. I think yes, they're ready sir. to go. I for sure. Agree. All right, thanks for sitting down and doing this. Yeah, yep, no problem, you. buddy. Well, that was a great interview, and it was a lot of fun going hunting with these guys. And I'm going to get back together with them in a month or so. And we're going to do some more coon hunting and also going to do some squirrel hunting. And for the first part of the year, I'm already booked pretty full. I have a lot of huge things coming up, a lot of great hunts planned, both coon hunting and squirrel hunting. I actually have a lot of big competition hunts with both coon and squirrel, and more hounds in spotlight and pleasure hunts with both coon and squirrel dogs. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and I hope you're enjoying my content and what I'm doing. And I really appreciate all your guys' support, and I'll talk to you next week. You ended up treeing seven-tenths of a mile. I had my light on coming in and he had another coon, so turned him loose three times, he had three coons.